When I look back at the DuckTales finale that aired on Monday, went 24 hours back to back afterwards into the following Tuesday evening, uh, two days ago, it really started to remind me, especially with the hype and, you know, after watching it, the way it was basically told story-wise and continuity-wise, it definitely reminded me, and I brought this up several times, especially when it was announced that it was going to go that looping 24 hours back to back. It reminded me a lot of the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic finale. Now, the reason I say that is because just like with DuckTales, um, you know, D Discovery Family and Hasbro uh, pumped up this finale as being like the be-all, end-all. Like a lot of stuff is going to get addressed in the finale. Things are going to be uh, revealed. Things are going to happen. You know, there's going to be a lot of closure. And there might also still be some things left open for you the fans to um, implement into your mindsets of what would be or what could be and potentially thanks to the season 10 comic continuation of the animation or animated continuity uh, by IDW we're kind of getting a little bit of answers to all of that especially it, you know with the fact that that's leading up to a potential big story arc uh, conclusion uh, down the line depending on how long you know it takes to get to that. But like I said, when, you know, Disney started promoting, you know, how big of a deal this 90 minute finale was going to be, 90 minutes with commercials, about 70 minutes non-commercial, uh, when they made a big deal of how big this was going to be, um, like I said, it reminded me a lot of the MLP finale because, you know, as I've talked about before, you know, when finales, especially series finales, get uh, pumped up as being like, you know, the be-all, end-all for the series, that it's going to answer all your questions. It's going to, you know, review, it's going to give you many revelations that you knew were coming or didn't know was coming, stuff like that. Sometimes those finales live up to the hype they're given, and sometimes they're not. I mean, with WandaVision, you know, WandaVision's finale has kind of a mixed bag. It's mostly, it's gotten a mostly positive reaction, you know, from those that viewed it, but it's also got a bit of negativity uh, thrown in there as well because there's some people that were not happy with the fact that what could have been the most obvious you know direction for them to go in almost obvious revelations to make you know they didn't do and instead they decided to go one way instead of you know another that people felt would be uh, the best solution be the best direction but again when I talk about you know comparing both the MLP finale and the DuckTales finale you know I have to say that these are two, especially from an animation standpoint, uh, two of the best uh, representations of how you you know give a show uh, through its animation uh, portion of it uh, proper closure because you basically address a lot of things that a lot of fans want answers to. Uh, you give them, and sometimes you do it. I should say. You do it sometimes in ways that nobody expects, and sometimes they do, but then you throw in a little twist here and there. And when I look at the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic uh, finale from about a year and a half ago, and the DuckTales one that just aired this Monday, I have to say that both of those shows uh, and their finales are great, as I was saying, representations of how you properly do uh, a finale. Because, you know, they you can obviously tell that with both uh, both finales, like from an animation standpoint, you know, they went all out. They went all out. They put in every effort you can think of by really, you know, giving you more detail, giving you more fluidness in the animation and taking it to that next level. And the storytelling that they gave along with it was top notch, you know, because you would because honestly, you would think, OK, the storytelling is going to be good. But it may not be as good as we've seen previously with other, you know, like finales, season finales and all that. But yet both these finales from a series standpoint did exactly that. I mean, we know with, you know, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, uh, the original intention and they followed through on this was to get Twilight to ascend to Celestia's place as the ruler of Equestria. But the added but the added ingredient um, that was brought in during the final season was Twilight wouldn't be alone in doing that. She would have her friends ruling in a way alongside her, um, if you will. You know, with the DuckTales finale, you know, it brought closure to a lot of things that were, 
you know, revealed throughout not just the final season, but throughout the series. Like, you know, when we find out, out about Della, you know, taking the spear of Selene into space and then being lost in that storm, the question always was, like, how did she know about this? How did she find out about this ship that her Uncle Scrooge was building? And in the finale, we find out that it was Bradford that leaked that information to her so that she could, you know, stow away and basically steal the Spear of Selene to try to test it out and show that she can pilot something as advanced as a spaceship like the Spear of Selene. You know, that's basically causing what was a conflict um, in the first season and somewhat, you know, in the second season, but mostly the first season. And that's the tearing apart of the McDuck family, the Duck family. So, you know, there, there was things like that where, you know, we were wondering, you know, how did she find out? And we get the answer in the finale, you know, three seasons later. And like I said, the comparison with MLP is that Lauren Faust, like I said, always had the intention for Twilight to, you know, uh, 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 basically ascend to Celestia's status, take over for Celestia. But the way they did it here in the finale, in the final season, was, yeah, they followed through on that request, on that one goal that Lauren Faust had. But they also added in the uh, extra ingredient that Twilight wouldn't be doing it alone. And that was pretty cool. You know, that was pretty cool. I mean, again, when you look at both of these finales, you know, everything to me was just done so brilliantly it was just uh, i mean the storytelling was brilliantly done you know the animation like i said was taken to another level and they did bring closure to a lot of things and sometimes they gave us unexpected twist here and there it's like you know with the revelation you know in ducktales that webby is scrooge's daughter i mean we kind of knew as viewers that there was something up about webby that we you know that kind of led to the speculation that could she be a clone or something and with the you know with certain moments throughout the final series uh, season I should say as well as in previous seasons of uh, foul uh, or some of the enemies collecting all these different things it's like all the pieces started to kind of fall into place but just not accordingly um, as of yet and you know when it was announced that, as I mentioned in my review that May and June uh, were being brought in uh, in the final episode in the series finale it basically I think started to in my opinion put those pieces accordingly together for us to figure out okay obviously they're going to be clones of Webby and that means Webby's a clone own as well but of, of who and then for them to add in the twist at the end and the revelation or the revelational twist at the end that she's a clone not of Beakley and not as somebody unknown like her mother, maybe who we ne who we've never seen, or even Della, or any of them, or any of them. You know, we find out that she's a clone of Scrooge, and we find out the reasoning. We find out the reasoning because um, in one of the earlier episodes in season three, as I mentioned before, you get this flashback of you know Scrooge confronting Madame Heron, or Heron, um, Black Heron, Black Heron if you will, Madam Heron, Black Heron, Heron, whichever name you want to go with, uh, about the papaya, about the pap papayas of binding a parchment and learning about what it's capable of doing. And obviously with, you know, Heron being an agent of foul, even back then, you know, the, the main, you know, with Scrooge putting into the papayas that, hey, only my direct descendant can, you know, uncover this. You know, basically that led to the idea that Bradford had to clone Scrooge to get that part. I mean, not, had to clone Scrooge in some way to get that parchment. And thus, Webby was the result. Now, you know, that was the unexpected, like I said, one of the unexpected twists, revelational twists that we got. And when you compare it to My Little Pony, you know, whether you agreed with what they did with the Grogar deal or, what, or whatever... It was kind of unexpected. Now, true, some people have come out and said throughout the past year and a half that they kind of expected that maybe with the way the eyes were glowing and the power and the coloring of the power that Grogar had being similar to Discord. But still, people were, were convinced that this was the real Grogar until we got the twist. And 
until we got that twist that you know at the beginning of the finale of the fact that it was actually discord that was grogar the whole time and that his intention as good as it may have been from his point of view was to have these villains attack on coronation day to try to prove to the world or try to get twilight to prove to the world that she's the leader that she is destined to be So yeah, along with things like that, and both, you know, kind of ending on a great note, if you will, if not similar and identical to how they ended, like in the first season finales and everything, it was, to me, I think, you know, both both the MLP finale and the DuckTales finale proved that if done right, if you get the right people behind uh, these finales, behind, you know, in the writing team, you know, as part of your creative team, especially from a writing perspective, what I'm trying to say, uh, when you do that, you're going to get gold. You're going to get gold because if those people that you bring onto your creative team from a story writing perspective, you know, just happen to be fans themselves that grew up, you know, with these characters or grew up with these franchises, then as fans themselves, they know exactly what fellow fans that will be watching would probably want to see or probably want to see referenced or acknowledged. And that's why throughout MLP and its long, you know, tenure on the air, especially in the later seasons, you started to get references and nods to the more grown-up um, fan base of, you know, the of the MLP fandom, because there was a lot of fans that grew up with the original MLP and the My Little Pony Tales, which is Generation Two, in my opinion, and basically by including some things that they could probably relate to or reference, I should say, to the original uh, generations, you know, that was all done because you, the writers they had on the creative team, excuse me there, uh, were uh, basically fans of the original material of when it first started. The same thing with DuckTales. I mean, one of the things they promoted the DuckTales series on was the fact that some members of the creative staff were fans that grew up on the original DuckTales and the original Disney Afternoon, and so one of the ideas that they wanted to go along with, you know, go along with to make this, you know, reboot of DuckTales stand out was making it a centric Disney afternoon, you know, um, a melting pot, if you will. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. A melting pot. They wanted to make it a central, a central pivot, a pivotal a melting pot for the Disney afternoon universe. And the way they did it by incorporating all different elements, references, characters in the, in very unique ways was, I thought, was very well done. You know, the fact that, you know, they the fact that they told the story of how Darkwing Duck became an actual hero in their universe by being inspired by the fictional version, I thought was brilliant. And I think everybody else liked it because it was... It was a different take on how you want to introduce how that character came to be. You know, with the Rescue Rangers, you know, a lot of people were happy that they were coming. But we didn't know how they were going to get incorporated. And then you add in the fact that they were experiments of Madame Heron, or Black Her Heron, if you will. That, you know, she used an intelligent ray on them to make them genetically smarter. Mostly starting with Gadget, if you will. I thought was... A bro I thought was a unique take on their origin as well. Because in the original Rescue Rangers, you know, they met all individually uh, at separate times. And that's how they became a team. Here, it's like they became a team right off the bat when they were hit with this IntelliRay, if you know what I mean, if you kind of get what I'm saying. And, and heck, even the fact that they, you know, they found a way to also incorporate Tailspin, mostly Kit and Molly, and basically make the Tailspin universe that we saw in 1990 and 91 in continuity with the DuckTales universe, you know, by having it take place like 30 years, 20 years prior, I thought was a great move, it, you know, and stuff. Is Again, another unique take on a, an established, you know, Disney Afternoon IP. And then with Gargoyles being referenced, you know, through Manny, you know, bringing out that power he swore he would never bring out again, and you add in the music of that, it's like, you know... Th that, to me, was the icing on the cake of what, you know, these creative people, this creative writing staff on the show, you know, that, you know, with the Gargoyles reference, like I said, that was the icing on the cake of the fact that, you know, the DuckTales, this new DuckTales series was the central pivot of a Disney afternoon universe, no matter how, you know, it was done. 
I mean, you had acknowledgments to the gummy bears taking and and their you know and their existence taking place like centuries prior and stuff like that. It's amazing. It was just amazing and unique on how they did it. And you know, the finale here to me really accentuated did a did an excellent job, I should say, in accentuating in sexual what's it's a hard easy for me to say in sin in um in sexual um oh God, a, I'm, I'm sorry this is what happens when you do unscripted stuff you know but it's cool it's cool insinuating and not insinuating but um uh, accentuating yeah accentuating all of that in a positive light and you know, especially in the finale, you know how they took all those references, all those moments, all the characters we've seen, and accentuating it uh, in a very positive way. The same with you know, you know MLP in its finale. It took a lot of things that were built not just in that final season or the final few seasons, but throughout the entire nine season run, and they accentuated. That's the word I'm looking for. Accentuated the positives, the best elements you know, of you know, the show into the finale as well as rounded it out by bringing back in that one iconic scene, bringing back all the characters that were touched or that were connected to the main six or the main seven, if you will, and what they had, you know, done for them on a friendship level. I mean, there were characters that some pointed out in reaction videos that we had not seen since the first two seasons, like the Buffalo from season one uh, and a few others. So it was, you know, it was a, again, just like with DuckTales, it was the finale that MLP had was a great way to bring that all together and accentuate um, all the pot, all the great moments and reference it, moments and things through, that were, you know, uh, you know, that were basically referenced and acknowledged and accomplished throughout the entire series run. And the same, like I said, with the DuckTales finale, because that's what they did here. They accentuated all the positives of what they had, you know, done throughout, you know, the uh, the series with the references, the characters and everything. And it all came full circle. And it all came full circle in a very, it, it, I have to say, it a very, and I know I'm repeating myself, it's a, in a very brilliant way. In a very brilliant way. So, I mean, there's nothing, I mean, honestly, there's nothing more I could say say when it comes to that and to me again and I know this video is going long so I do apologize uh, but in closing this just shows you that if you have the right people behind the scenes writing and crafting the stories of shows like this you know like MLP Friendship is Magic and DuckTales you know when you have them doing that basically what you're doing is you're allowing people that were fans of the original runs of the original versions of these franchises and giving the fan and giving the fellow fans something that they themselves as fans would want to see uh, become a reality and you know be utilized in the series and then when it all comes to an end potentially you know you know brought back in a very refer in a very uh, uh, referencely uh, reference referencely kind of matter easy if that's a word referencely you know uh, kind of matter so again both these, to me, are just great examples that you get the right people that understand, you know, what they're being, you know, uh, put in charge with, what they're given responsibility of writing stories for, you know, being fans themselves. And in the end, you're going to get 20, you're going to get 100 karat gold, no matter how you look at it. Platinum 100 karat gold, no matter how you look at it. And that's what we got with the DuckTales finale this past Monday. And two in a year and a half ago with the MLP finale, which people still watch to this day, and there's no doubt about it. Uh, but anyway, though, I just wanted to get that off my chest and kind of just talk about why both are great examples, especially from an animation standpoint, of how you bring you know you know long-lasting series or even not so long-lasting series, but impactful series from an animation standpoint, how you bring closure to them uh, in the long run. So. That's all I really wanted to say, guys. I know I may have ra sounded like I rambled here, but again, this is what happens when you when people like myself come on here and just you know shoot off you know shoot off the cuff uh, shoot off the cuff, if you will, kind of just you know say what we want unscripted, uh, you know whatever comes to our mind and all that. 
But anyway, though, guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below. How do you do you agree with what I had to say on um, how both finales, to me, set the bar of how, you know, an, a series finale, especially for a very popular animation uh, franchise, uh, should be done? You know, or do you or do you think maybe I'm just over exaggerating it and perhaps there's other better examples out there? Let me know down below. Comment if you like. I'd love to hear from each and every one of you, especially in the live chat. Support the Patreon at BWRosis at my Patreon.com there. And I will talk to you all later. But again, apologize if I did ramble. Again, this is what happens when people like me just, you know, shoot from the hip and go unscripted. <laughs> but let me know what your thoughts are. Comment if you like. I am out.